literally, it's just too hard to get a flat. It's too hard, you can't buy a house, I ain't got money to buy a house. When do you reckon you'll be able to buy? At least, maybe like 10 years. Victoria Working as a nurse for 26 years, do the Tories expect our support in the light of another 1% pay increase? But there isn't a magic money tree that we can shake that suddenly provides for everything that people want. Indeed, there was no magic money tree for the nation. But are the Tories about to unveil a more modest magic money tap? No, they don't have an overall majority at this stage. On that grim midsummer night for the Conservatives, they lost seats in their natural territory. And anxious younger people lay at the heart of that story as voters in their 20s, 30s and even their 40s preferred Labour. It is Philip Hammond's challenge in this budget to reset his party's relations with those younger voters. At the June election, uh, we lost among all age groups up to the age of 49. And that is a terrifying position for the Conservative Party to be in. So I do think that the party is very, very focused on it. In the feverish atmosphere at Westminster, there has been an intense internal debate in the Treasury about how to pitch this budget. Should the Chancellor be bold and allow spending to flow, or should it be a case of steady as she goes with spending restraint? I'm told one senior aide advised the Chancellor to throw caution to the wind to make sure he leaves a memorable legacy. This could, after all, be your final budget if Theresa May finally snaps with you, he was told. Other friends say this most cautious of politicians is not about to change the habits of a lifetime. I understand the budget will contain both elements of that internal Treasury debate. The Chancellor will turn on the tap. It will be more than a dribble, but we should not expect a gush. Every penny is accounted for by the man known as Spreadsheet Phil. No doubt Labour will say it's all just an illusion. One of the Chancellor's oldest friends believes he will spend some of his so-called headroom or war chest even though it is expected to be below the 26 billion he identified in March. So I think what the Chancellor will be doing is saying, look, it will be silly to throw away all the good work we've done in getting down the deficit level, about to turn the corner on debt. But yes, of course I'm listening. And when you look at what I did in my autumn statement, I created some headroom. And I will be looking at what are the ways that headroom can be used to uh, attack the problems that so many people have uh, spoken to me about. I am absolutely convinced that he'll be looking at some housing ideas. And there are some really creative ones about looking at loan guarantees for small builders um, and things in that sort of era. Uh, but also he knows that we need to build more uh, social housing and affordable housing. I think he'll be looking at ways he can encourage that. The astonishing fact is the difference in the likelihood of someone voting Conservative, whether they've got a mortgage, own their own home, or are in private rented or socially rented accommodation. And the difference is dramatic. And I know that every single Conservative MP is very, very focused on that fact and on the, the reality, which is that if we do not do something about this over the next three to four years before the next election, then we will be writing ourselves out of uh, the electoral script. We can expect a united cabinet front next week, but not since the Blair-Brown Wars has there been such a poisonous atmosphere ahead of a budget. One ally of Philip Hammond told me that Boris Johnson and Michael Gove are leading the internal charge against the Chancellor because they fear that the Treasury has grabbed hold of Brexit policy. This friend told me the critics are like Samson. They could bring down the entire temple. From the other side, one person familiar with the thinking in number 10 complains of sweary texts from the Treasury. Friends say talk of tension between the Downing Street neighbours is overhyped. They've known each other for many years 
Um, they will obviously chatter and talk and have serious political discussions about the problems of the day. They probably have sometimes, like most people, have a different view on how we reach the right solution. But like most people, they'll have a discussion and come to an agreement. And I've seen that, I think, a number of times in policy matters. And I do think that the characterization of the split between the Prime Minister and the Chancellor, you know, the rubbish that you know, they can't spend any time in the same room to them, was actually put out on the day they'd spend over four hours in the same room with each other. Um, so it seems to be complete nonsense that there's a split. Labour says the budget will have to tackle monumental challenges. I hope that we'll have some long-term measures from the Chancellor. I hope he's not going to be buffeted into you know, short-term measures that won't really deal with some of the fundamental problems that we have, particularly around low pay, because of course we've seen the longest squeeze on wages in Britain recently since Napoleonic times, and that's feeding through, I think, into people's political preferences as well. Turning on the taps may signal a gradual move away from the world of austerity. The challenge for Philip Hammond is to ensure he is still around for this new era.